tried many times to sort of clear up uh, how how to get out of the duality and really everybody has to see this themselves in order to get out because you won't understand until you see it yourself and the best way for me to explain it is that um, I just had an epiphany where I realized everything was love and it flipped everything and all of the things that I thought were evil were actually there to help me. I mean, not even evil, but bad or negative. They're actually there to help me. I just had this nagging feeling that there was something that wasn't right about the fact that all of the things in the world stage were fake. And they were fake because they had to be. So why are they fake? They're just there to show you something. They're not there to actually torment you or to hurt you. But we interpret it as painful because we think it's real. And so we interpret it and we hurt ourselves from it. And we look at them and we think, oh my goodness, these poor people, they're suffering because of this, this trauma they've been going through. And it's not even real. We inflict suffering on ourselves for no reason at all. And, you know, empathy is a good thing in a sense that you, you feel compassion for other people. But when you suffer because you see someone else suffering, it's a fine line because I feel the pain of other people. I feel heartbreak over it um, because I do see the light in them. I see the love in them and it's shrouded in fear and negativity and it's trapped inside this wall of defensiveness because they don't want to be hurt again. And I understand that. The only thing I can do is share my experience, share my perspective, and say, hey, in my experience, this is what has set me free. And maybe it will set you free too if you are willing to look at it and apply it to your own life. Nobody wants to get hurt, and we've been hurt a lot in this realm, but really, we hurt ourselves through being unconscious. I mean, our, we didn't do it on purpose by any means. A lot of the things we've experienced are not deliberate. We don't do these things to ourselves on purpose. We wouldn't wish these things on ourselves on purpose. We manifest the internal fears and and things that we haven't resolved within ourselves on the external so that we can resolve them. Because if we resolve them internally before they have the opportunity to manifest, then there's no reason for them to manifest. But once they have manifested, it is, it is obvious that it's something that we've been focused on a lot. We've put pressure on it. We've, ad we've added attention to it. And so it shows up in our reality. It shows up in our experience. And we're forced to deal with it. We're forced to confront it. And most people run from it. Most people don't want to deal with it. I can't blame people for not wanting to deal with it because it's painful. Um, because <laughs> this place is designed for us to deal with our pain and suffering so that we don't carry it into the new world. And that new world comes from the heart. So this existing world is primarily from the mind, it's primarily ego. And the ego is dying. And so it's fighting for its life and it's attacking us. And anything that we have left from the ego that we've not resolved, that we haven't dealt with, is gonna show up and we're gonna have to deal with it. And it's painful. Of course it's painful. But if you can just look at it as part of the process, it'll be less painful. It's just something that you need to deal with, something you need to go through. That doesn't mean that I need to accept negative experiences or things that I don't want in my life. Um, I think that noticing those things and saying, you know, this, this is not something that I want in my life. I, I've, I've passed the the stage where I don't want unneeded or unnecessary negativity to show up in my experience and not everything here is going to be joyful and um, you know <laughs> heavenly but we're supposed to be purging 
those negative experiences in order to get to the heavenly joyful experience we we do need other people to show us certain things about ourselves and certain things about where we're at in our journey what we need to deal with in the end I'm the one who has to decide and I'm the one who has to deal with it and I'm the one who knows myself best it is a very lonely experience there are other living souls out there we're we're going through similar experiences together and we're just all at different stages but I've seen some really horrible things horrible people horrible thoughts horrible energy and it really does make me want to shut the door it makes me want to go and hide and stay away from anybody and anything but I can't I can't allow that to take me over because if I did it would be to my personal detriment in the sense that the ego wants to block off the heart the ego wants to shut the door on the heart a lot of the experiences that a lot that that people who are in the truth community have they they get into the situation where they think they're targeted individuals or they get spiritual attacks or they get you know these these sorts of extremely negative experiences because what's happening is as you awaken to what is going on here to what this place is what you're awakening to is you're awakening to your heart you're awakening to your true self the core of who you really are which has been buried it's been buried under lies and ego and materialism and this this evil satanic world all satanic means is just the material it is the heavy low vibrational material existence that we live in and it is cut off from who we really are cut off from our heart center so the more into the material you are the further away from your heart you are the ego has been dominant for so long ego is always trying to survive it's always defending itself it's always in fight or flight and when it it senses its death it's an illusion but it senses its death it lashes out and defends itself and so as we awaken to the heart and awaken to the truth and the truth of who we really are the ego starts to fight back because the ego wants to believe the physical is real the ego doesn't believe in the spiritual or in the heart if you're dying to the physical you're killing the ego and it's not necessarily that the ego must die the ego wants all the material things it wants money it wants fame it wants notoriety appreciation attention um physical things the joys of the the material world and so your ego cre like creates these experiences that makes you afraid of the truth and that will manifest in your demons coming to attack you it's happening to you because you believe in it and so if you believe that the system is attacking you it will attack you 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 will start looking at people and see them looking at you you will you will happen to time it so that you look at people as they are looking at you you or you might even create the experience where they turn to look at you because a lot of these beings around us are not real they're holographic projections of the mind or their you know npcs so they they play into your perception a lot of times for for most of us we don't even recognize we're in the fear it's a little bit like boiling the frog you, you just sort of accept one thing after another until you, you know you're in deep and you don't even notice it and once you're out of it you'll realize oh my goodness I was in that and that how how did I even live in that because it was so dark it was so 
painful, it was so traumatic, stressful, etc. You just become acclimatized to it and you accept it and you just don't even recognize it because it's just life and the people around you tend to reflect that frequency that you're on and so you don't notice that either and you just think well everybody in my life is like this and this is what life is and so you don't know that there's another way to live until you change how you think and your life starts to change when I realized that all is love and everything is here to serve us in the purpose of our awakening that flipped everything for me and immediately took me out of the duality and then once I got out of that headspace and I got out of that fear, all of those experiences went away. You don't even know you're in the duality until you are out of it. Really, if you're in fear, then you're in the duality. But you can also be on the side of love and light and still be in the duality if you haven't dealt with your issues and your, your darker side. The primary difference between being out of the duality and being... Um, in the love and light side of things and how you would know is if when darker things come up you turn around and you walk away you don't deal with them you shouldn't be afraid to deal with things that are darker just because they're dark the whole point of being here is to transmute those things and to learn from them when you are out of the duality you don't perceive them necessarily you can perceive them as dark but it's not scary to you Reflect on it to find out like what is it trying to tell you, but then you transmute it and you learn from it and you heal from it and you move on so that it doesn't come back into your experience. Whereas somebody who's in the love and light side of things, they'll just ignore it and they'll just say love and light to you and walk away. And then they'll have constant experiences like that coming back to them because they haven't dealt with it. The main difference in being out of the duality is that you can appreciate all of it, appreciate the entirety of the system. This doesn't mean that this world is something that you should uh, like necessarily in terms of the system that we live in. And there are good things here, but in terms of liking the system there's there's no need to like it it's not supposed to be liked you're not supposed to enjoy it because the whole point of it is to provoke you into your awakening and so you're not supposed to like it you're not supposed to you know enjoy being a slave or enjoy um having a government rule over you and tell you what you're supposed to be doing all of the time you're not supposed to enjoy you know, NPCs walking around brain dead and, and following orders and just being complete morons. And you're not supposed to enjoy that the whole infrastructure of this world is built around the material and built around c consumption and mindless drivel. You're not supposed to enjoy that. What you're supposed to enjoy is going within, creating things that you want to experience connections with other living souls or living beings. I mean, you can even enjoy a conversation with an NPC. And I'm not telling you either that you need to accept negative experiences or negative people because, you know, you got to recognize that there are negative things here that you don't like and you don't want in your experience. And, you know, certain things will come into your experience because as someone who is out of the duality, you're going to attract people who want to get out of the duality and they don't really understand why they're drawn to you, but there's something about you they're drawn to. And if they're caught in the fear, they can bring you down. Once you are out of the duality, you will start to see those who are not, and those who are trying to drag you back into the duality. And if this is the case, you may need to tell them to go or walk away in love and let them deal with their darkness, their shadows, before they interact with you again. And at this point, when you walk away, you're not ignoring the darkness, you're recognizing it and choosing to disengage. It's not the same thing as love and light, see you later. 
This involves positive things also. Choosing to side with one over the other is participating in the duality. Enjoying the material world for what it is, a reflection, a mirage, a game, an illusion, it allows you to detach yourself from choosing sides. You're able to see all three sides simultaneously, the left, the right, and the whole. Observe from the perspective of the whole and you'll not be pulled into the duality. You'll be able to help others in detachment and allow them to be without further interference. You will love and accept them as they are, wherever they are on their journey because you know that they are exactly where they're supposed to be. They will see in you where they truly are at their core and be able to move toward that of their own accord, of their own free will. But this only applies to those who are meant to rise up. The NPCs will not evolve, and they're not meant to. There's nothing for you to do or to say other than to express your true nature, which is love. And the natural course of being will handle the rest. Thanks for listening. Talk to you later. Bye.